Hello everyone, my name's Ethan, and today I'm going to be making sourdough bread. But before that, I've got to make myself a shot of coffee. Today I'm just using a glass bowl, just a regular glass bowl, but you're going to want to grab one much bigger than this, because this is way too small. And I figured that out the hard way. Don't do the same thing. To this bowl, I'm going to add two cups of warm water and 14 grams of dry yeast. Just give that a little mix and then sit it aside for about two minutes. After you've let that sit, you can go ahead and add three and a half cups of plain flour. And then I'm going to add two tablespoons of raw sugar. After you've put all your ingredients in, you can just go ahead and mix it till it sort of resembles a pile of snot. When I'm finished making my snot, I'm going to go ahead and cover this up with some glad wrap. But I'm also going to poke some holes in the top, just to make sure my yeast doesn't die. So now I'm just going to chuck a tea towel over it, and then I'm going to stir it every 12 hours for the next 5 days. And like magic, it's five days later. And yes, in that time, I did learn how to film landscape. I also got up at 1.30 every night just so I could stir this. Now you can see after five days, how runny my starter has become. And now we can start with our dough. I'm using four cups of plain flour two teaspoons of salt, and one and a quarter cups of water. I'm gonna give it a quick mix to bring it all together, and then I'm gonna add one cup of my starter. I'm going to leave my mixer on low and I'm going to need it for about 10 minutes. While I'm waiting, I'm going to save the rest of my starter in a sterilized mason jar. This will last forever in the fridge as long as you feed it one teaspoon of sugar every week. Making your mason jars sterile is as simple as pouring boiling water over them. Also, don't forget to struggle at putting on the lid of your mason jar. Then, after 10 long minutes, you can see our final dough. I'm going to let this rest for another 12 hours overnight. The next morning and 12 hours later, it's finally time to knead our roasted dough. What I'm going to do now is called balling. This is shaping of the dough. Whatever you shape your dough to look like now is generally what it's going to look like when it comes out of the oven. And here's another dough that I prepared last night. This one's made from spelt flour. As you can see, it's much darker. Spelt flour is a little bit more difficult to work with as it has a much lower gluten content than regular flour. Now let your dough proof for another four hours and it's ready for the oven.
four hours later and it's finally time to bake our bread. I'm going to be using a crock pot method and as you saw I've cut a little cross in the top. This is to let some air escape. If you don't cut the cross in the top, it will explode. Keep that in mind. Preheat your oven to 250 degrees Celsius and bake your bread covered for 30 minutes. After 30 minutes, you can go ahead and uncover it and bake until it's golden brown. Forty-five minutes later and you should have something that looks a little bit like this. Enough playing around, let's get to cutting this open. Now I'm pretty sure that was the best sound I've ever heard, so let me just stop talking and jump into this. Holy crap, this came out way better than I thought it would. 